Hey guys, what's up? So welcome to this tutorial on Fast API. So in this one, we are going to be building a web crawler type of an application using Fast API. So in the Python community, Django and Flask are the most popular when it comes to web development. So Fast API is a relatively new framework. So it puts forward performance. It's more performant and is on at par with Node and Go, which sounds pretty cool. So it's built on top of the started web framework. So the started web framework comes with everything you would need to build a really fast web application. It has support for things like GraphQL, web sockets. So really interesting technology. So we'll go ahead and set it up. So it comes with things like static typing, things like async await, which is really cool. So we'll set it up, see how we can get a basic fast API server up and running. And then we'll go ahead and create this application where a user can supply a URL. And then we get the URL that they send. Then we look out on the internet and scrap all the metadata information and then send it back to the user. So you can see that right here, I just entered the URL www.google.com. So you can see in the response, we get the title, we get the icon if supplied, we get the URL of the image of this website. We get the description, we get the the keywords that are on the site. So this can be useful when you when you want to add like a link previewer feature on your website. So you can use this, this data for many things. For example, if someone shares a link somewhere, you can look it up, you can look up the API, then you get more information and then maybe the user can get a better user experience. So let's go ahead and get started and build this application. All right, so I'm in my VS code here. So I'm gonna open up the terminal here. So now what we need to do is install a few things. So pip3, install, we are going to need to install FastAPI. Uh, feel free to use a virtual environment, that's fine. So you see when you install FastAPI, it's going to go ahead and install Starlet and also Pydantic. So we'll actually be looking at how to use Pydantic for data validations. So once you install that, you also need to install UVCon, which is the web server that we'll use. So pip3, install, UVCon. So that's going to go ahead and install it. So once you install those, then we're going to create an app.py file, which will be our main application. So in here, the first thing you want to do is bring in the first API class. So you want to do from first API, import first API. Okay. So once we import that, then we want to set our app to the first API instance. So you do first API. Okay. So once you do that, then we need to define a route that we can use to test with. So we use this decorator for the app. So we do something like app dot, so we define a get request. So we want, whenever a user goes to the home page, then we want to run, so we can run def index, and then we want to return something like hello world. So we can do something like hello world. So let's return JSON, so we can specify a message here. So message, hello world. Okay, so now for us to run our program, we need to first check when we are executing it. So what we need to do is now here, I'm gonna do a if dunder name, dunder name equals dunder main, and then we want to run app. Okay, so we want to run the web server with our app instance, which is this, and then it's gonna get access to everything we define on the app. So what we do is we are going to now import in UVCon, so import UVCon, okay? So import UVCon, so here what we do is we do UVCon. So we want to run our application, so you pass in app. Then the next argument will be the host. So the host can be 0 .0, 0 .0, 0 0.0.0.1, and then the port. So let's just try port 4200. Okay, so if you're not familiar with what if then the name equals then the main is, we are trying to tell Python, to execute this code once this file is run directly. So something like this. So if I came here and said Python 3, and then I did something like app.py, basically we are running this file directly. So that means the current module here is called Dunder main. So meaning this is gonna match and this code is gonna get executed. So if you run it, you will see that we have UVCon running here on port 4200. So if I click and we go there, you will see that we get hello world. Simple, yeah. So that's how you can basically set up a web server. So right now I could come here and define another route. 
dot get. So let's say user we want to get when user is going to about. And maybe we want to handle some, we want to handle that. So def about we return about. Then we say something like version one. Okay, so notice that so notice that when I saved the server didn't reload, and now if we went back to the browser like this and then try to access slash about, we won't have the change. We are still getting the not we are getting the not found. So what we need to do is to make sure that it reloads, we need to pass a reload equals true in here. When we want to do this, we need to pass this as an import string. So meaning we are going to need to be running this inside another module and then we import in our app. So I'm going to create another file here. I'm going to call it debug server.py. So in here, we can now import our app. We can now import our app. So from app, it's going to be from app, import app. Okay. So here, now we can run our very code. So we want to run with uvcon. Let's bring in uvcon. So import uvcon. But now we need to run it as an import string. So the syntax for the import string is we run we run it with the name of the module. In this case, this is debug server. And then inside the string, and then we put a full colon and then the attribute. So we are going to be running this. So basically the path is debug server, then app. Okay, so once we supply that, now we can run back our application. So now you can see that it starts up. And now if we go to the browser, see we have that. If I go to about, we get the about. So if I come in here and added something, let's say I create another route. Let's say, uh, let's say something like user. And then we say return user, user one, something like this. So when I save, you notice that the server reloads and now I can come back here and go to slash user and you see that it works without having to reload anything. So for now, I'm gonna be pausing the video here. In the next one, I'm gonna come and we build our application. Thanks for watching, bye.